I'll be reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 3. Numbers 12, 3. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of the earth. Yeah. Here's the word. Here's the word. Here's the word. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I look out. There's a lot of people here. It's awesome. It's so great to have everyone here this evening. We've been working through this uh, this weekend, trying to uh, make sure that we can share the gospel with others. We've had the opportunity to door knock uh, in this this area, this general area. It's been a a wonderful time just being able to spend time with the brothers and sisters here at Inglewood. Thankful for uh, the brothers that came from Bear Valley. Thank you guys so much for being here and, and putting in the time and the effort uh, to come. I know when I started making the schedule, it was looking pretty rough. And uh, we're doing, doing some heavy days, but very thankful for you guys being here. It's just, it's, it's wonderful to see strangers working with strangers. <laughs> serving one another. Because... Most of you students had no clue who most of the people in the congregation were, and most of the congregation didn't know who you were. And so to see you guys working in a perfect harmony is just absolutely wonderful. Having some trouble, John? You good? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> So if you want to turn your Bibles to Numbers chapter 12, that's where we're going to be for uh, this evening. We're going to look at a story about a grumbling Miriam and Aaron against Moses. They're against everything uh, in, in this situation. They're against his wife, and they're speaking against him and, and speaking ill of him. But he doesn't react. He's a servant, as God calls him. In verse 7, my servant Moses. It's a wonderful aspect here to look at, just to see the, the characteristics of Moses and the way that he reacts in this situation. So this evening we're going to look at three situations. A strong servant appears weak. Because Moses is a strong servant. A very strong servant. But in this situation, the world would classify him as weak. And it's not by any Christian standard, but by the world standard. The first situation that we're going to look at, strong servants appear weak by staying silent. If you want to look at verse 2 of chapter 12. And they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us as well? And the Lord heard it. Pretty sure Moses heard this as well. And that's, that's the thing here. They were speaking against Moses. And in verse, uh, verse 1, Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married. For he had married a Cushite woman. They were being racist here in this situation. Now, uh, they, they don't really... Go back and forth. That's, that's the cool part about this. Is There's not a back and forth. Moses stays silent. He doesn't react to what is being said about him. Now, our brother Donnie Bates is uh, an instructor at Bear Valley. He told us a story about uh, an elder that was getting scolded because of the things that he was doing. Which really weren't all that bad. But it was someone's opinion of him. And he sat there in the foyer in front of everybody. And took what was being said to him naturally and lightly without saying a thing back. And he's just stayed silent the whole time and let her just rip on him the entire time. Guess what his response was? It wasn't, how dare you? How dare you speak against me? That is not okay for you to be speaking against me like that. I am your elder. No, he didn't say that. He said, I'm sorry. Can you pray for me to be a better elder? That response, the fact that he didn't react in a mean or, or just malicious way, he respectfully listened to what she had to say 
He served her. He let her get what was on her chest off of her chest. Now, what can we gather from this? From staying silent? Well, we can gather that there are some people that will speak ill against us constantly. As Christians, we're going to face persecution constantly. Because the world doesn't like us. They don't like the love that God has for us. So they're going to speak ill against us. They're going to try everything that they can do to tear us down. We're going to serve them. We're going to wash their feet. And they're going to ridicule us. That's just the plain truth. But how you react will show what kind of servant you are. Do you serve the Lord? Or do you serve yourself? Because here, Moses could have said something against them. But the Lord heard it. The Lord spoke for Moses. The thing about us, when we're getting persecuted and we try to react, we forget oftentimes that every knee will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And everyone will face judgment. Amen. God will speak for us. So we don't need to speak for ourselves in a situation where we're being spoken ill of. If we're serving, we serve them by loving them, no matter what they think of us. And that's the most important thing there, is the love that we share as servants. Now, we're going to look at another situation. Strong servants appear weak by subjecting self. Now, what does that mean, to subject yourself? To be Subjected to the will of others. <clears throat> what does that mean? What does that mean? It's a, a wonderful aspect of life, the leadership that we have, right? We've got a, a lot of different leaders. We've got, of course, the government. We've got the state government, the city government. We've got our elders. But... What else are we subject to? Of course, we're subject to God. But what else are we subject to? We are subject to one another. We shall subject ourselves to one another. If I am to serve you, my subject, I'm submissive towards you. As you are to me. Now, Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, which was just read. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than any man who was on the face of this earth. And I have to make the joke, Moses wrote that. I have to say it. But he was guided by the Spirit. But he is the most humble man because he was subject to those people that were against him. He was subject to the people that were for him. He wasn't a leader that told everyone what to do. He was a leader that acted and helped them get to where they needed to go. He didn't tell them that they needed to go do this and they needed to go do that. That was not the case. It was the fact that he led them and guided them, protected them the entire way, served them the entire way. He did not let pride get in the way of certain things. There's a lot of CEOs of big companies that would never, ever pick up a broom. Ever. And I'll tell you, my dad is a, a business owner, and it's really cool to see him. He's a good example to me because he doesn't just tell his workers what to do. He goes and works with them. And I'm glad that I have that to look up to. I have Tom to look up to. He doesn't just tell you what to do. He goes and does it with you. Now that is a servant. Someone that guides you and walks with you the entire time. Moses did that. Now, just to give you uh, an, an idea, we had, I worked for a hotel a few years back, and we had a lady come in that was com given complete control over the hotel from the owner. The owner didn't want anything really to do with it, and he put this lady in charge. One of the sweetest ladies I had ever met. One of the sweetest ladies. And yet, nobody respected her at all. 
Nobody had any respect for her. And any time that anybody wanted anything that they knew she wasn't going to really approve of, they would go to the owner, ask them, and then they would get a no. And all it did was ruin their reputation with their boss. That's all it did was create a disconnect. But how often do we do that to ourselves? We, we kind of jump over the thing that we should be doing. We should be going to someone directly. Rather, we go a step farther where we shouldn't be. Instead of going to, to the elders, I just I do my own thing. Is that the way that we should do things? No. Because you are the authority. Under God. God gave you that authority. And as servants, we are subjected to that authority. If we aren't, then we're serving ourselves. Isn't that right? And for some reason, people would foresee this as a, as a weakness. <clears throat> it's not a weakness. In fact, someone that is subjected to authority, even when it's something that they don't particularly, <coughs> particularly agree with, <laughs> even if it's something they don't agree with, Yet they still do it because they know that's what they should be doing. That's a servant. That's a servant. Now we're going to look at one more situation. Strong servants appear weak by showing sympathy. So the entire time, Moses was being spoken ill of. They were, they were not very nice to him. They were being very rude. They were not respecting his God-given authority. What does that, what would that lead you to do? I'd get angry. I'd get pretty mad. That's not fair. Why aren't you listening to me? Come on. This whole time I've been trying to lead you and you're just not doing what I'm telling you to do. What's, what's the deal here? If we have a study, we kind of get the same way, right? You know God wants you to be baptized. Why aren't you doing it? <laughs> well, they're not listening. We have to pray and have mercy on them. We have to pray and have sympathy for them. If someone does you wrong, what are you supposed to do? Pray for your enemies, right? Amen. Love your enemies. Pray for your persecutors. Love your persecutors. That's incredible. And that takes a servant heart, doesn't it? But we'll look at the situation where Moses is in. They were speaking so poorly of him the entire time. And when Miriam was struck with leprosy, guess what? Verse 13, And Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, Oh God, heal her, I pray. She was just speaking poorly against him, yet he is praying to God that she be healed. He loved the people that were subject to him. He was a servant. We need to be the same way. Amen. If people aren't doing what it is that we need them to be doing, we need to guide them and push them in the right direction. Otherwise, we're not serving anybody but ourselves. Now, Devin gave a great lesson on subjecting yourself to Christ. Putting Christ first in your life. That is our main goal. Amen. The, the J-O-Y acronym. Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. <laughs> That's the way that goes, right? When you put Jesus first, your life will go amazing because God is in control of Amen. that life. Yes, He gives us free will, but if you subject yourself to Him, He is in control. And you put others before yourself. I'll tell you, you will never be happier. I learned that lesson at Camp Koinonia. I went for myself the first couple of years, and I figured out that the minute that I stopped caring about what I wanted was when I was actually having fun. Isn't that right, Tom? Now, as servants, we serve disregarding all feelings that we have. Doesn't matter if we don't like the person. We love them because Christ loves them. We serve them because Christ 
serves them. And I'm sorry it sounds like I'm yelling. I'm not. I'm just trying to be loud. <laughs> but we have three situations from Moses, and they're, they're beautiful situations here. Strong servants appear weak by staying silent. He stayed silent the whole time. He let God speak for him. Amen. Strong servants appear weak by subjecting themselves. They're subject. We are subject to authority. Now we'll read verse 7. Not so with my servant, Moses. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be awesome if God called us his servant? Amen. That is my servant. Wouldn't that be just a blessing to hear? So wonderful and, and it would feel so good to know that you did everything you could to be called a servant of God. Amen. Now, the third one that we looked at, strong servants appear weak by showing sympathy. Like I said before, the world might view these things as weak. You might be seen as someone who is weak. You're not. You're a Christian. You're a Christian. You follow those three situations that Moses was in. You are not weak, but you are a strong servant. You are a servant of God. If you've not had the opportunity to put Christ first in your life, and if you would like to become a servant of God, if you have anything that we need to pray for this evening, we ask that you come forward as we stand and as we sing.